when I hear the word style, I put the, my hand on the gun. I think that uh, cinema is language. The idea of style has always been kind of alien to me. Like, I hope not to have a style. And I hope that what I do comes across as uh, a spoken language. I think I am naturally a voyeur. I like the word voyeur in French because it basically implies the act of looking at things. I've always been the guy in the back of the room. I've never been at the center of the action. I always tried to observe things and enjoy from the observation of things. And so I grew up and learned in time through films, through filmmaking, that the truth of what I looked for was always what is the right position for the camera only after you know what's happening in the reality of the film. What does one do around here? Wait for the summer to end. When I choose locations, I really, really want to make sure that the place is a protagonist as much as the characters. So for me, the idea that in doing that, you have a, a way in which you immerse yourself, your collaborators, your actors, in a world that can make them be more at ease in being the characters they need to be, it's a good thing. When we did I Am Love, we shot in the real streets, we found this amazing place called Villa Necchi, we took over the house, we almost used the house as a soundstage, and that's something I kept doing in my life, took it, taking over real places and adapting them to my movie. I only can believe in a character who expresses himself or herself through behavior in a way that is uh, relatable to me. Even if it's a bad guy or a bad woman or like a, a mean character, there has to be a sense of belonging to a truth that I am interested in. I like the way you say things. I don't know why you're always putting yourself down, though. The characters in Call Me By Your Name and the players of Call Me By Your Name's characters were people, fictional and real people, that I've been so invested that I'd like to go back and revisit the lives of these characters and these people. Call me by your name and I'll call you by mine. It's the miracle of life. You meet someone that you have sort of ancestral link with and then you don't separate. It's a serendipity moment and that's what happened with Tilda. We met and we never parted ways because I think we share and we invest ourselves to make sure that what we do is done with the principle of pleasure and fun, but also it's done with a serious commitment to what we really want to say and tell. I feel uncomfortable in approaching my work in this kind of totally controlled way. I like that sometimes I don't know what I'm doing, that I'm realizing what I did only when I see the footage and maybe when I juxtapose it with another piece of footage. And then with my editor, we are able to understand that the juxtaposition is generating a third thought, a third image, a third concept, or, or even simply a third emotion. I like the idea that when you do a movie, you don't know exactly all of what you're doing. I think it's important that you go for the intuitive, not necessarily for the rational. The piece will be called Vida Öffnen, Open Again. Ali. Suspiria is a movie that I always wanted to make. In making the movie, I like to say that I'm making my first film because as I was growing up as a kid and then as a filmmaker, I always wanted to make horror films. Horror films is the thing that drew me to the idea of a cinema of the senses, you know, like something that is like heightened, like a horror movie experience could be. <laughs> the thing that drove us all was 1977 Germany. We were really sticking to that point. The period, historically, this very dark German autumn where those very dark things were happening in society and why they were happening. So I think 1977 was our guide. <laughs> I like the idea that when you finish a movie, the movie is there. It's a terrifying sensation and thrilling one because the movie becomes independent from me. It's an arrow that flies through time. Otherwise, we wouldn't be so enamored with cinema. Ah!